Pets in Germany. Everyone knows the German Shepherd or the Dackel Dachshund. Germans seems to be infatuated with dogs. Let's take a closer look at German pets today. In fact, the most popular pet in Germany is not the dog, but the cat. With around 15.2 million cats in 2022, it is the number one pet among Germans. Domesticated around 10,000 years ago, cats were used to rid the mouths of mice and rats. This is still a task on farms, but rarely in the city. There, people enjoy having someone at home when they come home or having a cuddly animal roaming around them from time to time. The particular difference between cats and dogs is that cats appear to be more independent and, as typical loners, need less contact with the family. In addition to food and play, grooming is of course important. Domestic cats can usually use a litter tray, which then also needs to be cleaned. There are also vaccinations and possible examinations at the doctor. However, a major disadvantage of cats is that outdoor cats, which do not only live indoors, kill around 200 million songbirds in Germany every year, or young birds without parents starve to death. In addition, feral cats reproduce uncontrollably. All attempts to have cats neutered, as a matter of principle, as in Austria for example, in order to get the problem under control, have so far failed. Some responsible cat owners secure their own gardens or balconies so that the cat can run free but do not let them go wild and also ensure that there is enough variety in play at home. To protect wild birds, hunters are allowed to shoot poaching cats directly. In some federal states, a distance of several hundred meters from the nearest dwelling is sufficient for cats to be shot. What the cat people value in cats, the dog people see quite differently in their dogs. Germans have around 10.6 million dogs. Here too, poaching dogs may be shot by hunters, but only in the act and if the owner are not nearby to retrieve them. The dog was domesticated from the wolf around 15,000 years ago and later bred. It's hard to believe that the Chihuahua and the St. Bernard are related. The dogs were initially bred for hunting, but also for protection. Even today, there are still hunting dogs such as the Münsterländer or the Jack Russell Terrier, which was invented to enter the dens of foxes and badgers. It was different with herding dogs, which steer the sheep in the right direction through the behavior of a predator, but which do not bite the sheep as this would be more of a hindrance and uneconomically. There are also livestock guarding dogs that live with a flock in order to provide a nasty surprise for the predators in the event of an attack by a wolf or bear. As wolves are becoming more common in Germany again, this might also be an option to protect the herds in Germany. In the 16th century, lap dogs appeared to keep the ladies company while the man was traveling to bark at every other man and, vice versa, to pull the fleas of the women, as the dog had the higher body temperature. As a pack animal, a dog naturally needs its pack, this means the family, in order to feel comfortable. Attention should be paid to the breed and what it was bred for. Complaining that a terrier doesn't obey the first command because it was bred to be independent and to cope with foxes and badgers is just nonsensical, as not giving border collies any task because they were bred to herd sheep on command. A guard dog would also have to be very well socialized to allow visitors to its flock or a hunting dog to keep its hunting instinct in check. In addition to the task such as feeding, playing and grooming, as you do for a cat, the dog also needs to be trained and taken for a walk. Depending on the age and type of dog, 4 to 10 or even 20 times a day for puppies, old dogs may only need to be walked for one or two hours in total. But if you have sighthounds, hunting dogs or sledge dogs, this could be 10, 20 or more kilometers. Such dogs in particular need to be exercised accordingly. 
when Germans pay so much tax and sometimes even church tax, it's probably no surprise that there's also a dog tax in Germany. Most municipalities levy a dog tax, which costs from 20 to 30 euros per year up to 180 euros per year for the first dog and usually a little more for the second or third dog. So-called list dogs can sometimes cost 500 to 1000 euro per dog per year. List dogs? What are they? Listed dogs are dogs on a list that are typical fighting dogs such as American pit bulls or bull terriers. Also, dogs are not dangerous in principle. These breeds were often kept in criminal circles and sometimes used for dog fights or as a status symbol or weapon. As there have indeed been some cases in which people, especially children, have been attacked and sometimes seriously injured by dogs, the federal states have drawn up new rules for keeping dogs. On with dog tax. Dog tax has existed as a hundekorn, literally dog grain, since the 15th century. The first state dog tax was introduced in Great Britain in 1796. In what is now Germany, it was introduced in the then Danish Duchy of Holstein in 1807 and later in Offenbacher Main and Saxony Coburg. Prussia later introduced it as a luxury tax. This tax generally applied to private individuals who did not keep dogs out of necessity. Shepherd watchmen or people who lived outside villages or in forests were often exempt from the dog tax. Even today, Dogs belonging to shepherds, dog breeders or police dogs are exempt from the tax, often also dogs that have been taken from an animal shelter. There are also a few municipalities that have introduced such a tax for horses. There are around 1.25 million horses in Germany, a third of these are kept privately and almost half are kept in boarding centers. Well, a horse is not the typical pet. Let's move on to other small animals such as hamsters, guinea pigs and rabbits, of which almost 5 million are kept in Germany, often as pets for children, especially when dogs are not allowed. Here people are happy about the small cuddly animal, but you still have to explain to the children that it is an animal, not a toy. Animals are kept in almost half of all households in Germany. Please always bear in mind that some animals should not be kept alone. While dogs and cats integrate well into the family, rabbits and birds need the same kind of company. When buying an animal, it is important to consider how old it can become and how long this means responsibility. For example, tortoises or parrots can live to be 50 or 100 years old and dogs 10 to almost 20 years old. And what happens if you want to go on holiday or fly? Animal welfare also plays an important role in Germany. Authorities are authorized to confiscate animals that are not kept in a species appropriate manner. While Dobermans used to have their ears and tails dogged, this is now prohibited in Germany. Even the removal of a wolf's claw may only be carried out by a vet if there is a medical reason. In contrast to feral cats, there are hardly any street dogs in Germany. Found animals are quickly taken to one of around 1,400 animal shelters or wild animal rescue centers. This amounts to around 350,000 animals per year. The animal shelters take care of animals and first look for their owners and then a new home. There is no plan to kill the animals after a certain period of time. Animals that cannot be rehomed, remain in a shelter or at a sanctuary until they die. Even if a wild animal such as a bird or hedgehog is found, it is taken to a vet to treat the animal, usually free of charge for the finder. Before taking in a wild animal, you should find out whether the animal really needs help and what the best help for this animal is. In the case of pets, vets are bound by a scale of fees just like Doctors for Humans. In recent years, however, the scale of fees has been increased, so the vets can also pay the increased costs. Vets examine, vaccinate, operate on and, in the worst case, euthanize animals. 
In 2019, all Germans spend around $70 per capita on pets per year, not including dog tax, of course. During a dog's lifetime, the owner can expect costs of about 15,000 euro, cats owners up to 12,000 euro. Pet food, at least for dogs and cats, is already available in discount stores, for small animals also in supermarkets and other specialty foods in pet shops. Anyone who wonders why dog and cat food taste like chicken, pork or beef, but never like mouse, is also protecting animals. No mice are bred, just used as food for cats. Instead, leftovers from slaughtering for humans are used in the feed. Germans take very good care of their animals and many dog owners at least take the puppies to dog school. For so-called list dogs, but also for large dogs, specialized knowledge is required in some federal states for which the prospective owner must undergo a test. Even if the animal has died, there are around 100 pet cemeteries in Germany and corresponding pet funeral parlors. Animal welfare in Germany goes so far that animals are often brought to Germany from animal rescue centers or killing centers in Eastern Europe or from the Iberian Peninsula. Two groups can be distinguished, especially when it comes to dogs. Some people attach importance to a particular breed of dog and look for breeders. Others go to animal shelters and give the animal a new home. Some also give dogs from other countries. Unfortunately, there are a few people who look for animals on the internet, which plays into the hands of irresponsible breeders, often from Eastern Europe, who separate apparently pedigree dogs from their mothers far too early and then sell them to unknowing new owners with forged papers and in poor health. Anyone interested in an animal should first go to the local animal shelter or, if it is a pedigree animal, directly to the breeder. Any responsible breeder will let prospective buyers into their home and show them the mom and kitten as well as informing them when the kitten can be handed over at the earliest. It does not matter whether it's a dog, a cat, a rabbit or a bird. To practice a little, if you are interested in an animal, it's advisable to get information from people you know who have animals and perhaps to care for them during holiday. If you come to Germany now, sooner or later you will come across dogs. I have noticed that people with a migration background are more likely to avoid dogs, sometimes even crossing the road. While young children are usually fascinated by dogs, regardless of their parents' react, this fear among older people must be roomed somewhere. Anyone growing up in Germany comes into contact with series such as Lassie, The Five Friends, TKKG or Commissar Rex, or films such as Benji, 101 Dalmatians, or a dog named Beethoven on television. In many other series, families and protagonists have a dog and a great relationship with it. What is it like in other countries? How is a dog seen there? There are currently various series on TV where you can see dog, cat or horse trainers at work or where animal shelters and animal welfare organizations and their prodigies are presented. In public life, of course, you see dogs with their owners much more often, if only because the dogs are walked several times a day. As a rule, dogs are not a problem in Germany. Many Germans instinctively know whether the dog is excited or relaxed. However, you should always ask the owner beforehand whether the dog can be stroked. They know best how the dog will react and whether it is appropriate at the moment. You should also not feed strange dogs that you will not know whether the dog will tolerate it and how the dog will react to it. Some dogs can suddenly defend their food and then become aggressive. And of course, you shouldn't leave a child alone with an unfamiliar dog or an unfamiliar cat. For Germans, pets are usually part of the family and it's beneficial for children to grow up with animals. They are both healthier and have better social development and learn responsibly at an early age. How is it with you? Do you have animals? Let's know in the comments. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you next time.